Cycle Talk TV is brought to you by Ducati, Kawasaki, KTM, Harley Davidson, On Two Wheels Motorsports, Polaris, Triumph, and Victory. On Cycle Talk TV today, we have the 1290 KTM Super Duke. This is a big V twin in a lightweight, sporty chassis. We've also got the Vespa Primavera, a new scooter that is the best way to get around our tight cities. We've got Kawasaki Ninja 300 racing, we've got a classic Triumph, but we're kicking it all off with the Ducati 1200S Monster. Now when the Monster was first introduced in 1993, they came basically just in air-cooled form. And they always had an old school lumpy sort of feel. In the early noughties, you could buy liquid cooled models. And in fact, I've got a, a Monster S4 RS with a 999 tester shredder engine at home. And they always had a bit of a raspy, edgier feel. The latest liquid cooled 1200 Monster is really the best of both of those types of engines. Now you can see that the styling wise, it does hold a few cues from the past, but it is quite a departure. It still uses a trellis frame, but it's once again quite a bit different to every other monster that's come before it. One thing is for sure, this is more super bike than ever before. The first thing I really noticed about the new Monster 1200 when I sat on it was that you sit in the bike. Every other monster I've ridden before you tend to sit on the bike. The seat can be adjusted to two heights, so it's got 810 millimeters and 785 millimeters. It's easy to do. Fully fueled, the bike weighs a shade over 200 kilograms, so it's easy to push around. In traffic, low speed, it's fine. There's two different models. You've got the standard Monster 1200 or the S model, which this one is. Now the standard gets 43 millimeter Kayaba fully adjustable forks and it gets a sax single shock on the rear which is adjustable for preload and rebound damping only. Now the S gets Olin's front and rear. Massive 48mm forks, fully adjustable. Single shock, fully adjustable. The engine pretty much just comes straight from the Multistrada. It's the uh, Testa Strata 11 degree. For 2014 it's been updated in the ECU department so it's now smoother than ever before. The S has 145 horsepower, the standard has 135. Well that's enough for a technical overview, but what's it like to ride in the real world? Well I've had this bike for two weeks. I've come away very impressed. The suspension is the best I've ever sampled on a Monster. I've been critical of suspension in Ducatis in the past of being too hard. You know, take the Multistrata out of that, it's sort of designed for crap roads. It's almost like they've taken the suspension off the Multistrata 1200S and plonk it straight on here. Perfect for me. Um, it handled everything that I threw at it. Riding down the road, normally you're bracing yourself for big impacts, not on this bike. In the corners when I was riding harder, the front end started to squirm a little bit. That was okay, I just increased the compression damping a bit, took that out, and now I've got to do the great compromise. You know, it still will squirm around a bit if you're pushing very hard, but that's fine by me because it can tackle the big bumps. It's pretty technically advanced too. There's three riding modes to choose from. So you've got urban, touring, and sport. Eight level traction control. Great for a day like this, it's raining of course. Three level ABS. And when you select each particular riding mode, the bike does have its default settings for ABS and traction control. This is all part of the uh, Ducati safety pack which is on this bike. In urban, 100 horsepower, softer throttle response down low. As you go up into touring and sport, it gets more and more. And you can get in there and tailor these specifically to suit yourself. So you could have, theoretically in touring, full power, full initial throttle response, less traction control, intervention and so on. But for me, I, I like it just how Ducati sent it to me. In sport, bang, you can loft the front wheel if you so desire. Uh, in urban, 100 horsepower is plenty. Touring, great. I like that little bit of softer throttle response down low. It was easier to ride. I think overall, the whole mechanical package on this bike is awesome. 
the front brakes, the big mono block, four piston Brembo calipers, loads of power and feel, awesome engine, even better suspension. Simply put, this is the best monster I've ever ridden. The Ducati Monster 1200S is available from Ducati Dealers Australia wide. It's 135 horsepower, priced at $23,990 plus uh, government charges. And you'll get more info from ducati.com.au. So we've come to the land of croissants, of beautiful coffee, cobblestone streets and the Vespa. Now in Australia, that means we're in Melbourne because this is a wonderful, wonderful place to enjoy the culture of the city. And the best way to get around and see all that culture and experience it all is on a Vespa. Now this particular model is the new Primavera 150, but it's very much styled in the classic designs of Vespa since the 1950s. Step through, lots of bright colours, very easy to ride. You, you jump on it, it's, it's, it controls are like a push bike, just the brakes on either side, just twist the throttle and go, fully automatic, very, very easy, lots and lots of fun, beautiful style. What, what more could you want? Our first ride took us to Melbourne's famous Vespa House, a scooter store which has been selling and servicing Vespas for decades. A family business, Vespa House is being run by the grandson of the man who set it up, and everyone there has a real passion for the brand and scooters in general. The main showroom looks fantastic, filled with new and classic Vespas, while the accessory area has exquisite jackets, helmets and other riding gear. The back rooms are pretty well as Grandpa set them up, while the workshop is full of old parts and memorabilia. Vespa House is a 1968 Primavera, the name being brought back for this new model. And if the old ones are anything to go by, the latest Primavera will be worth more in 40 years than you'll pay for one today. Buyers will get a much nicer machine than the LX150 the Primavera replaces. It's much smoother, its quality of finish is better, it's even easier to get your feet on the ground thanks to the tapered foot wells. After Vespa House, we were back on the Primaveras, through the city streets and into the beautiful green parks which are dotted around Melbourne. We wound our way back to the city and Ligon Street, where we had lunch at La Porchetta, a classic Italian restaurant which served us beautiful pizza underneath old Vespas. Yep, mounted to the ceiling are many old scooters, while the walls are covered in bike posters and photos. We even had a glass of red, but that's okay, we only had one. The variety of colours the Primavera is available in is pretty stunning too, from reds to blues to white and even a bronze model. The new machine has more storage under the seat now thanks to the battery being moved to sit between the rider's legs, freeing up space under the seat. In front of the rider's legs is a glove box operated by the ignition key and it now has a couple of panels to prevent things falling out when it's opened. Back on the scooters we headed off for Gelato and then to Port Phillip Bay to shoot some more video and photographs before the big ride out to Werribee across the West Gate Bridge to experience the capabilities of the Primavera on the freeway where it coped admirably. Over the freeway the Primavera sat comfortably on 100km an hour but I did feel like I was sitting up a bit like a windsock but there's no doubt the machine can cope fine with freeways despite being a bike which is designed and really best suited for slower travel. And even when we got there, the fuel gauge was still showing the tank to be nearly full. For getting around town, the Vespa Primavera is perfect. You can carry a day's essentials, they are incredibly cheap to run, and for $5,990 plus government charges, they are probably cheaper to buy than a monthly train ticket. And if you choose the 125, you'll even save about $700 on the price. Check out the local registration rules in your state. The 125 might work out a lot cheaper than the 150 for registration and insurance.
Everyone puts their pants on one leg at a time. What separates some of us, though, is what we throw a leg over after our pants are on. The new Harley-Davidson Breakout Motorcycle. Breakout. Now back in the day, pretty much every motorcycle had one or two cylinders, it was naked and they scared small children. And since then bikes have got fatter, they're nearly as wide as a small car, some of them. They've got more cylinders, I mean four cylinders is the norm, sometimes even six cylinders. But it's refreshing to see that KTM with its 1290 Super Duke R has taken us back to the roots of motorcycling. It's naked and it's all about the horsepower. The first time I saw the 1290 Super Duke R in action was on YouTube and in that 30 second or so clip the bike tester managed to flip the bike before it even got it out of pit lane. Now that highlighted the fact that this is a bike with a lot of horsepower and it's a bike to be reckoned with both by the rider and also KDM's competitors. Now maybe it was just a case of too much enthusiasm and not enough talent but it just goes to show that this bike is one serious naked contender. But there's also another side to this story. KDM's designers have realised that most people will need to ride this bike to the shops. They'll need to ride it to work. They'll need to ride it in heavy traffic. They'll need to ride it over crap roads and they'll need to ride it over long distances. So the test for this bike in my mind was not when I was riding the bike as fast as I could when I was twisting the throttle as hard as I could or tipping it into the corner on its side under hard brakes. The real test of this bike was going to be to see how it performed in the real world. So did the designers come up with the goods? Well the biggest improvement I can see over the previous Super Duke R is the fuel injection mapping. Where before the throttle felt more on off than desirable, the new bike is smooth everywhere. Bumps don't phase it and the transition from no throttle to getting on the throttle is the best from a big ball KTM yet. But this bike just isn't all about the engine. Now KTM owns WP or white power suspension and as you would expect this bike is fitted with white power forks and rear shock. Both the forks and the rear shock are fully adjustable and the forks, the 48mm upside down units, have separate damping so one fork controls the com compression damping and the other fork controls the rebound damping. And keen observers will also notice that the uh, bike is fitted with a single sided swing arm so besides looking as trick as it allows you to take the rear wheel off really easy. Nice. The KDM continues to use the uh, tubular steel chrome molly trellis frame and the styling has been updated but you can still see traces of the old bike in the design. On one side the new 1290 Super Duke R is a beast with a lion's heart. On the other side it's also a big pussycat if you want it to be. The KDM Super Duke 1290R actually has a 1301cc V-twin power plant. It'll cost you about $23,500 plus on-road costs and you can get more information from kdm.com.au. Bonneville. Now the name evokes thoughts of speed and glory and for the merit and era of triumph the bike really was a big part of those glory days. People couldn't get enough of the Bonnie and the early T120 650cc days the bike sold in huge numbers throughout the world especially in America. 
Then former Meriden era Triumph worker Les Harris started building new bonnies under licence from about 85 through to 1988. But by then the desire for most people to own a bonnie had just about evaporated due to basically poor build quality and suspect reliability. Now this bike is a bit of a mixture of different parts or different eras as such. It's a uh, left hand gear change, it's got uh, twin discs or disc front and rear and that's sort of the later type body, but it's got styling touches and a few parts from earlier models as well. In the last 12 months it's had a fair bit of TLC, rebuilt engine, rebuilt ammo carbs and it's got tri-spark ignition so it does run well and is reliable. Well, this bike, it's not running the best at the moment, so it's not giving me a true indication of what it's like to ride, really, but one thing I've noticed is that uh, this is a fairly light bike, and when you compare it to the GT750 we did in a previous issue, the performance is pretty similar. This might even have the edge on it, but I think it's not so much down to the horsepower, it's down to the lightweight. So it does feel pretty lusty. The uh, the handling's pretty good for what it is, and the brakes are better, really, than a lot of early 1970s motorcycles. So, I can see the charm in these things, but to enjoy the ride, it's got to be a good motorbike, and it's got to be put together right. And uh, when it comes down to the styling of it, well, really, the choice is yours. You either run it like a, a SoCal hot rod like this, or you run it uh, totally original. Whatever way you're going to do it, you're going to have a lot of fun. Fearless innovation starts with an attitude. While others claim to be ahead of the curve, we're already leaning into the next one. We're about setting the precedent year after year and letting the rest play catch up. They ride to keep up with today. We ride to own tomorrow. is back and rides even lower. Come down to On Two Wheels Motorsports, Sydney's best motorcycle shop and a proud sponsor of Cycle Talk TV. With a huge range of new Yamaha and Kawasaki motorcycles and ATVs, as well as a huge range of spares and all the accessories you're likely to need, On Two Wheels can help get you into the right bike at the right price with the right accessories and the right advice. On Two Wheels Motorsports, 304 Queen Street, Campbelltown. Find us online on social media or call us on 02 7518. Didn't know anything till I was told everything about you And though I tried to hide, my smile gets wider every day But now I can't deny the white of your eyes It got me feeling the strain Of how I couldn't speak every time I heard your name Read Cycle Talk Magazine's October issue, out now on the cover are the 2015 model Harley Davidson Road Glide Special and the Sherco 300 SER, a big American tourer and a lithe French enduro machine. You can read the October issue in print from better bike shops across Australia on your computer or Android device through cycletalk.com.au in our PDF edition. But the best way to enjoy Cycle Talk is on an iPad or iPhone, which is everything in the print edition plus embedded video, slideshows and lots more pictures. And it's all free. Download the app from the App Store and then subscribe free and download back issues too. All of Cycle Talk's editions, electronic and print, are free. Check out more information on Cycle Talk on our website, cycletalk.com.au, and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're here at Winton Raceway in regional Victoria. It's about minus three degrees at the moment, hence the 10 layers of clothing. But we're here to look at the Kawasaki Insurance's Ninja FX300 Cup. It's an inexpensive entry sort of level class of racing. We're going to show you some of the racing and we're going to meet some of the people involved. Now I'm here with Murray Sale from Kawasaki Australia. Now uh, Murray's one of the movers and shakers of the 
Kawasaki Insurances Ninja FX300 Cup. It's a bit of a mouthful, but the uh, the series has been pretty popular. Um, so, Murray, tell us a little bit about why Kawasaki's keen to be involved. Okay, well, we, we're involved because we want to see people have fun. It's a, an economical bike to buy, so uh, you can get into road racing minimal outlay when compared to other classes that are in road racing. So it's a great stepping stone between other branches of the sport or if you just want to go road racing, you want to test the water, find out what it's like, the Ninja 300 is a perfect bike. It offers uh, plenty of performance and uh, very competitive racing. Some modifications to the bikes are allowed. You can change the rear shock, you can change the fork internals, brake pads, and you can do a few modifications to improve the performance, like put some aftermarket exhaust systems on. But generally speaking, the bikes are fairly standard to keep them all very competitive and keep the cost down. Now, Cycle Talk TV has been invited uh, to ride the Kawasaki Motors Finance Ninja 300 with a rider. Alex Pickett on board. Now, Alex, uh, it's a little been a little bit of uh, uh, well ups and downs over the weekend. So, uh, what what are your thoughts of the bike? And uh, tell us a little bit about what's happened to you over the weekend. Well, the bike has surprised me actually. It goes reasonably well for the ears and handles reasonably well as well. But we haven't had the best weekend so far. Like we qualified all right, but yesterday in the third race had a big get off and dislocated my shoulder, which isn't what we want and then today went all right qualified seventh and in the first race got seventh and in the second race got fourth so pretty happy overall so uh what do you think of the series for young people to come through as a learning tool i mean you've started on smaller capacity bikes yourself when you're younger but but also from the point of view of someone like yourself it's quite a big experience now to for the for the fun factor yeah it would, it's definitely good for like kids coming up through dirt track and stuff like that like just, they're similar power to a 250 four-stroke, so it's not like a massive step to a 600, and it's not a big experience. It just brings the fun back into the sport, really. Like, you can have a laugh while you're riding without taking it too serious. Well, that's good. So, uh, we, uh, what, uh, podium next race, or the last race, or uh, first? Oh, uh, I'd like to get a podium, but let's see what happens first. So I'm with Kyle Buckley from BC Performance, and Kyle's also riding the Ninja 300. And Kyle, I've known you for a few years now, you know, uh, from the junior days, but you've also raced 600s. How does, how do they compare, and, and why are you on a 300? Um, well, for me, the cost of the 300 is obviously what brought me back. Um, I like the 600s; they're fast and no room for error. I, I like that sort of racing, but I mean the 300 class. I didn't expect the whole heap, but stepping down to it, it's definitely definitely impressed it's it's more competition than i ever could have imagined and yeah i'm loving it now it's pretty full on at the front end isn't it it sort of takes you back to the little cbr 150 days no oh, exactly exactly i mean there's there's four or five of us up the front and there's there's no difference in between us it's just all whoever can get to the line first and I mean, throwing guys like paul young in there you know he's a very experienced rider and he he said uh, he knows what he's doing so i mean yeah i i love it now a couple of rounds to go. Where do you sit in the championship? Um, with three down now, I'm, I think I'm second. With I've uh, got about five points behind the leader, so could try and play my cards right and see if I can catch up to him this round. And obviously over the next couple of rounds, just yeah, just stay on board as well. Because up in Queensland, I had a bit of trouble, but um, you know, just have to see what happens. The Kawasaki Insurance's FX300 Cup has one round to go, November 21 to 23 at Sydney Motorsport Park in Eastern Creek. More information from kawasaki.com.au. My product pick of the week might have helped me a few years ago when I had a motorcycle stolen. Now, back in those days, I didn't have many locks, but I've learnt my lesson. We've been using Abus locks for years, and this is the Abus Detecto RS1 disc lock. Now these German made locks give you very high security and we're going to show you how it all works. The Abus Detecto lock comes with a neoprene pouch which is perfect for carrying it around. Comes also with a pair of keys. Now if you want to order some you can uh, actually get multiple locks key to like. To use the, use the lock uh, you just turn the key and it pops open at the back here. So there's a hardened steel shaft here. Now this button here is very important, this steel plate here. 
that actually sets the alarm. So if you just push it closed like that, take the key out, it's locked, but it's not, the alarm's not set. So that's how you use it for transportation, things like that. To use the alarm, you turn the lock to open it, and then when you put it on the bike, you slide it up on the disc, and if my thumb was the disc, you push against that, it locks and sets the alarm. That's what the green light's all about. And then even if you pick the bike up off the side stand, if you forget to put it on there or someone tries to wheel your bike away, it'll go off. Once you've got your uh, disc lock open, you just slide it onto your disc, push hard, that latches it, and sets the alarm. That little tone is to tell you that it's all set, ready to go. Now, it is quite a sensitive alarm, so you've got to be careful when you undo it to prevent it going off. Hold it steady, push the key in all the way, undo it, turn it to undo, and off she comes without setting the alarm off and waking the neighbours. The Avis Detecto RS1 locks are available from motorcycle shops right around the country. They're $119.95 recommended retail price and you can get more information from motonational.com.au. Thank you.